G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. The camera is a little bit far away and you know, I can't be bothered setting up any uh, recording equipment um, and I can't plug a mic directly into this uh, very cheap camera. So, welcome back. I'd like to have a quick talk about Spectre Operations. You know, there's so many games that I'd love to play. You know, I don't get a lot of time between Knights of Dice and um, my software company, KV Interactive, and um, to play games. But, you know, I'm still interested in them. And every now and then, rule books come across my desk, or um, I go out searching for rule books, and, uh, you know, I'm interested in, you know, a variety of games. And Spectre Operations is one of those rules that, uh, that came across my desk a while back. I'm going to say maybe a year ago when Stephen May, who uh, runs Spectre Miniatures in the UK, contacted me via Knights of Dice saying, love your buildings, they're fantastic, can we talk about doing some stuff together? Now that has never really gone anywhere. Um, you know, I've got so many uh, uh, um, pots boiling and, and you know, not enough potatoes to put in those pots that um, you know, I didn't really get around to doing much and you know, what I did do, you know, anyway, that's beside the, that's beside the point. Anyway, um, while I was in the UK this year, last year in April, I met with Stephen. So it's been it's been way longer than a year. Anyway, last year when I met with Stephen in Nottingham, and you know we, we caught up at a pub, there had a few beers, and you know sp spoke about you know gaming and models and blah 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 whatever. Um, you know we had a chat about Spectre miniatures, and this year picked up the rule book or maybe I got it last year I can't remember I've had this for ages um, now those people who have followed my channel for a while I'm sorry let me just you know stop right here it's the middle of the night here I have had a few drinks and I've been wanting to do this video for a while so whatever happens now is probably going to be uh, a very long ramble there's not going to be a lot of stuff to have a look at, so, you know, turn around, get your brushes out and keep on painting, or, you know, just flip over to the next video in the recommended video list. Um, but I wanted to film something for Spectre, you know, so I can at least get this ball rolling. There are a whole bunch of other games that I want to film videos for, and again, like, it's the middle of the night, like I just said. This is the only time I really get to do any sort of hobby work at home. After my daughter's gone to bed, um, after my wife's gone to bed, you know, now I can paint miniatures and you know, all that sort of stuff and now I can make some videos. So if I do this video, you know, I'm, hopefully I can start doing some more. <laughs> if you've been following my channel for a while, I did talk about Force on Force, which is another modern gaming rule set, which is what Spectre Operations is, you know, for modern gaming. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, and I never went anywhere with Force on Force, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen here because, you know, this game, like Force on Force, is very, very good. Um, the miniatures that Stephen May sculpts, he does, uh, as far as I'm aware, all of the sculpting for uh, Spectre miniatures, and you can find links to their uh, web stores in the description of this video. They're very, very good figures. Um, I don't own any of his figures. Um, I've got a vast collection of miniatures from Eureka Miniatures, obviously being in Melbourne, they're sort of, not just down the road, but you know, it's a short half hour drive down to Eureka Miniatures. I've got a lot of their stuff, you know, I've been interested in modern gaming for a very long time, and um, anyway, when the chance came to have a look at this rule set, um, you know, I thought, great, fantastic, we'll see what it's about. Now, I've looked at Force on Force, I've played Force on Force, I have all the Skirmish Sangin books, um, and so I thought I'd have a look at Spectre Operations. Because as much as Force on Force was a very good rule set, um, you know, it had some nuances that made the game difficult to play after you've had a few drinks. Skirmish Sangin is another good rule set. If you're looking for a game that is hyper detailed, super intense, it's a percentile based game. Um, you know, there's charts and charts and charts in that rule book. And I, uh, you know, like I said, I have them all on the shelf over there. And you know, maybe one day when I'm really interested in, you know, devouring and analyzing that rule book, I can sort of give a much more fairer representation of, of what that game is. But at the moment, you know, I haven't invested as much time into uh, Spectre, uh, uh, sorry, into um, Skirmish Sangin that I have into Spectre. Now, I'm yet to play a game of this. As I said, I don't get a lot of chance to play games. And I don't know anyone uh, in my area here that has actually ever played uh, Spectre. But, um, you know, that's, that's not to say that um, 
you know, there's not people out there that might be interested in playing. So, what do I say about this rule book? It, it is a beautiful, beautiful rule book. How many, how many pages? It's 106, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 111 pages. And it is all rules and stats and scenarios. Obviously, being a modern game, you know, there's no fluff. There's no fantasy history. There's no sci-fi history. There's no this faction. There's no that faction. It is all rules and stats. Um, and, you know, as much as I hate to say it, um, you know, because I know Stephen, you know, we've spoken several times, and I've met his wife, Jessica. Um, she, she's done the design and layout of this rule book, and I'm really sorry, guys, but it's fucking terrible. Um, you know, I've, I've read a lot of rule books, and I've played a lot of games, and um, this rule book, like version one of Malifaux, is terrible to read. Um, I, you know, I've read this rule book five or six times. I've made, you know, at least 20 player aids to make the game easier for me to understand and for me to teach people. The quick reference chart in the back of this book is, you know, fairly rubbish. I mean, it's got all the tables and everything in here, but even then, you know, this, it's not a quick reference guide. You can't look at it. There's no, there's no turn sequence on the quick reference guide. Um, you know, th there's a... There's a cover table modifier here, um, and you know this. You know the, just the layout of this book. Direct fire combat, for example. You know there's several modifiers that affect direct combat, um, direct, direct fire combat, um, and you know they're in different places in the book. And there's even a table here for direct fire modifiers, some of which aren't in that table. They're in other sections of the rule book. Um, it is littered with beautiful, beautiful pictures of wonderfully painted miniatures. Whoever paints these miniatures is fucking out of control. Um, they're the sort of figures that you look at and you go, man, that's beautiful, I've got to have them. And when you get them, the figures actually are amazing. You know, the, the raw images that I see on the internet, you know, that's not, there's not painted detail on these figures. You know, some figures you see on the internet, you can't be sure sort of if the artist has gone to extra effort to actually paint in some of those details to make the figures look fantastic, because you know, I've bought figures like that and they've been absolutely rubbish. Um, or if the sculpture is actually very, very good. Now, in that sense, I mean, the, the rule book is beautiful to look at. I mean, it's lovely paper, it's thick, it's glossy, you know, it's a high quality book, but it's just very badly laid out. I'm not sure when the rules were written or, you know, how long, you know, they spent changing the rule book. I mean, there's some big names in the front of this book. Ali Morrison, Alan and Michael Perry. Um, you know, and I've seen pictures of Stephen at the Perry Brothers' house. I've seen them um, with John Stallard from Warlord. Um, you know, there's some big names in the front of this book. And now, I don't know how much time has actually been spent on the development of these rules. Because whilst they're relatively solid, there are some issues with it, and, you know, and I'll explain those as we go through future videos. Um, but the, the wording of the rules for a book that's 111 pages is full of, you know, spurious is not quite the right word, but you know, just, you know, I'd expect uh, let, let, let me throw this scenario at you, for example. Now, let's take War Machine, for example, right? War Machine, from the very first edition of War Machine, has been a rule set that has touted itself, and, you know, I'm comparing apples to oranges here, but, you know, the, the point will hopefully come across, if I can, if I can manage to get it across. Let me, let me just lubricate my lips. War Machine from the very beginning has been a rule set that has prided itself on being written from a tournament play perspective. There can be no alternate interpretation of the rule because it has been written in very specific uh, language and terminology that there cannot be any confusion. And that works very, very well in a tournament game. It has to. Unlike Games Workshop, unlike 40k, you know, it's, it's a massive game and you know it's a very 
you know, competitive game in some circles and, you know, there's big 40k tournaments and whatnot. And, you know, there's always rules discussions. Those two games, you know, they're in a different ballpark than Spectre. Spectre's not a tournament game. You know, we'll come to it in a minute. You know, it's a very narrative, very story-driven game. And I'll explain what Spectre actually is, you know, hopefully, hopefully soon. <laughs> um, but the wording in this rule book, you know, it, it leaves a lot of questions. Now, I've posted quite a lot of stuff on the, on the Facebook group. Um, again, the link is in the description. Trying to understand the meaning of a paragraph or a sentence or a rule. Um, now, one of the most recent ones, and you know, this is the, 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 the example that comes to mind because it's the most recent, has to do with fragmentation weapons. Blast weapons. Um, now, War Machine uses very specific terms. Touching within, wholly within, partially within. Um, but Spectre, in the first paragraph, uses two different terms. Within and inside. And it never explains what within or inside means. Um, and from a, from a gameplay perspective, certainly if you're trying to understand the rules, certainly more so if you're trying to teach other people the rules, you know, being able to understand what the rule actually is, is, you know, kind of important. Um, and so after some clarification, you know, in this example, any figure that is touched by a blast template is affected by that blast. Now, there's still some confusion in my mind because the, the responses came back, they said, if the miniature is touched, not the base of the miniature, because it's a 20 millimeter based game, it's designed for that. My entire collection, like most people, is based on 25 millimeter bases. Um, so they said, look, because people use 20 mil or 25 mil, maybe, you know, maybe use the miniature. But then, then that brings up the whole question of pose and all that sort of stuff. You know, some of this is semantics and me being a little bit pedantic and whatnot. But like I said, this is the first time I've really torn apart a rule set um, so that I can understand it. Why? Because I'm really looking for, you know, uh, a modern game that fits my play style, my play requirements. I'm not into right now, nor do I have the time, to dedicate to, you know, a super hyper-intensive game like Skirmish Sang It. Um, I just want a fun, quick game to play. Now, Bolt Action Modern, you know, it didn't quite have enough for me. But Spectre, on the other hand, seems to have that. It's just that the rule book is very poorly uh, written and laid out. Now, so what is Spectre? Right, Spectre is, um, you know, it's based on, uh, you know, modern gaming, sort of, you know, the interpretation of what modern gaming is varies, you know, from circle to circle, from, you know, some people say from anything from World War II up to sort of 1990, maybe even 2001, you know, the first Gulf War, uh, maybe even 2010. It varies a lot, you know, anything after the first Gulf War is ultra-modern. Some people think that after 2010 is ultra-modern, but, you know, Picture people running around in Iraq or Afghanistan, and pretty much that's what this rule set is for. Now, unlike Force on Force, which is really written from a sort of an asymmetric sort of perspective, or allows you to play both asymmetric and symmetrical um, battles, you know, Spectre is very much more orientated towards, you know, your elite combat team, your, you know, your Delta Force, your SEAL team, your US Force Recon or Rangers or SAS or whatever other elite sort of battalion or, 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 or soldiers versus the unwashed masses. Um, that's pretty much what, you know, I see in this game. Um, now, that seems to be what the rule book is, you know, telling me. That seems to be what I see on the internet, on various battle reports and on the Facebook group. and um, Whether it can be used for symmetrical warfare, you know, you know, a US force versus a German force or versus a Russian force, you know, a more modern sort of combined army rather than your sort of insurgents or your militia or, you know, your local street gangs or whatever. Um, Spectre fits that sort of narrative. And it's a very narrative-driven game. It's not a pick-up game. You couldn't just rock up somewhere and go, let's play, you know, 100 points of Spectre. You could, by all, you, you could, but, you know, the game's not really geared towards that. It's really geared towards, you know, th that sort of, that narrative, that, you know, that story-driven game where, 
you know, beforehand someone designs a scenario of, of you know, this SEAL team needs to achieve these objectives. And you know, it works great as a little mini campaign game. Um, and you know, that's, that's why in this book at the back, or well, all throughout the book, um, you know, there's, there's lists and lists and lists of profiles and weapons and, you know, it's not quite as intense as the skirmish saying, but, um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of detail in here. It's not ultra complicated. You know, for example, there's, there's rifles and carbine section. You know, it classes it into carbines, assault rifles, battle rifles and dedicated marksman rifles. And it gives you some examples. You know, I have not, I'm not a weapons person, I'm not a modern person, but it gives you some examples. For example, an assault rifle could be an X, anything from the M16 series, the AK series, the Scar L, the SA80A2, whatever the fuck that is. Um, it gives you some examples of a battle rifle, an FN, an FN Fowl, a G3, a Scar H, etc. Um, so it, it does, you know, help to classify and group some of the weapons together. Um, but you know, the book's full of that. It does have rules in here for vehicles and, you know, off-table assets like airstrikes and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot in this book. IEDs and, you know, lists of equipment and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's really geared towards kitting out, you know, a, a small group of fighters, soldiers, versus, you know, a much larger contingent of militia or you know, tr trained uh, fighters, etc. There are different class levels in this game. Um, and, you know, there's a table here ranging from zero to level 12. You know, untrained civilians, militia, um, trained soldiers, professional soldiers, and elite operators. And you have team leaders and commanders within each of those um, levels. I do want to spend a lot longer, you know, analyzing these rules so I can really understand them. Finish putting together my player aids, so that, you know, when I come to show other people the game, you know, it can flow easily and make sense. Because, like the very first edition of Malifaux, this is not a rule book that you can read, you know, one or two times, and then you go, I've got a fairly clear idea of how to play the game. It is one of those rule books where you go, okay, well, I need to break this into sections. Let's have a look at the section for movement and figure out how that works. Let's have a look at the command phase. Let's have a look at the tactical action phase. Let's, let's worry about vehicles later on. Let's worry about IEDs later on. Um, let's worry about, you know, different sorts of weapons later on and, you know, get used to, like, the, you know, the direct fire and indirect fire and, um, you know, thrown weapons and non-lethal weapons and, you know, just slowly sort of figure it out. Um, so as much as I'm rambling at the moment... You know, like I said, I have read this rule book six or seven times. From what I've read, aside from some very, you know, peculiar things that I think might happen on the table, like suppression, for example, in this game is per model. Um, and you'll see later on when I actually start running through some examples, you know, the table has the potential to be a little bit cluttered with some administration. And suppression is one of those things that perhaps, you know, I might modify instead of being you know, individually man-based, you know, I might make it unit-based. You know, there's a couple of peculiarities from the reading through that just jump out to me and say that potentially is going to be a problem on tabletop. Again, keep in mind, I haven't played this game, right? And aside from watching some battle reports on YouTube, um, you know, I've never seen the game played. So with all that in mind, and you know, this video rambling on for a long time, what do I think of Spectre? Let's put the issue of the rule book aside. I think it may scratch the itch that I have for modern gaming. You know, it's narrative, it's story driven, and I love those sorts of games. Um, you know, that's why I'm interested in Tribal, and I want to do videos on that. That's why I'm interested in Twilight. Um, that I want to do videos on that. You know, I like small little games that have substance. Um, you know, a real reason to play the game and perhaps, you know, leave some of the game uh, rules up to you. I mean, Tribal, for example, is a very, very simple game. You can read the rule book and learn to play that game in 10 minutes. Um, but by that very nature, there's a, there's a whole bunch of unanswered questions that you as the player need to, you know, decide. What am I going to do about this? The rule book doesn't 
sort of mention something but not really tell you the rules. It's just not there. It gives you the core mechanics and the rest is up to you. I love it because of that. You know, it lets me play a story. Now, Spectre, you know, it's like that. You know, it's a story game. It's a narrative game. Um, the rules, you know, they seem fairly solid. The gameplay looks like it's fairly quick in comparison to, you know, Force on Force or you know, certainly Skirmish Sangin, which is, you know, administration heavy, in my opinion, at least. And, you know, I might be completely wrong. I, like I said, I haven't spent as much time devouring that book as I have this one. Um, but, you know, there's enough in this rule book for it to be complex and in-depth, but at the same time, the core mechanics, you know, are relatively simple. Um, is it worth looking at? Well, it depends on what you're looking for, really. I mean, there's, there's lots of rule sets out there. There's hundreds of them. Um, whether this one will be the one that, you know, really fits me, I don't know. I'll only know that when I actually start playing the game. But, you know, the first part to playing the game is, A, just getting used to, you know, the very basics, and then, you know, really exploring the game uh, so you can get the most out of it. You know, I won't use vehicles for, you know, the first dozen games. Um, possibly, I don't know. Um, is it worth looking at for you? I have no idea. Hopefully, videos that I'll be doing uh, on this game and other games, you know, will give you an idea of, you know, what I see in a game and how I enjoy playing it, and certainly in relation to Spectre. Um, the videos that are on Spectre will clearly give you a much clearer idea of what I think of this rule set, excuse me, from Spectre Miniatures in the UK. So, there we go. This is another weird thing for me. You know, the casualties table here, you know, it lists out, there's six type of casualties. There's light wound, medium wound, incapacitating serious wound, incapacitating serious wound, catastrophic incapacitating wound, and catastrophic incapacitating wound. So there's six different types of wounds in here, and they all have different effects. But, you know, two of them are called the same thing. That's weird to me. I don't know if that's a, you know, a misprint or a copy-paste problem, or from what I understand, I don't think it is. So, you know, my quick chart references and stuff, you know, I've had to rename some of this stuff. And um, just so, you know, when you're explaining it to people, you know, this is a light wound, this is a medium wound, this is a serious wound. This is an incapacitating wound, this is a cat catastrophic wound, and this is a critical wound. Um, there's just a few, you know, you know, a few things in this book that, you know, from a, from a language perspective, you know, could have been much better. Um, anyway, there we go. I've rambled on for long enough. I've criticised the book enough. I'm very sorry, Stephen. I'm very sorry, Jessica. And Matt, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Adams, who's helped her write the rules. You know, it does look like a very interesting book. <laughs> Rule book layout aside. Um, so let's see what happens. You know, I've got a table around the place somewhere. Who knows where the hell it's gone. Um, you know, I did some videos on it a couple of months ago, my little desert table. It might have taken it back to the studio. I don't know where it's gone. Um, I've got a few things to finish off on that. And, you know, once I do that, you know, we can, uh, we can play some games. I've been painting a whole bunch of figures. Um, if you follow me on, on uh, Facebook, my Rubbish In Rubbish Out page, you know, you'll be seeing, you know, all the painting progress that I've been doing there. Um, and I really should put this camera on a little bit more frequently and film a few more vi videos. There we go, I've rambled on long enough. I've got to uh, finish doing the dishes and then go to bed. Um, there we go. There's my ramble about Spectre Operations. Um, let's see what happens in videos in the future. I'm looking forward to actually playing the game along some dice. Catch you next time. See ya.